Today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. 10 kids and their parents ventured through a torrential downpour to drive to Jefferson, Georgia, about 75 miles from Atlanta, to bowl at one of the few remaining bowling centers with wood lanes and the oldest continuously operated bowling center in the state of Georgia. We're at Jefferson Lanes for a special Prodigy double feature as we watch young athletes from bowling's future compete on lanes that seem like they're right out of bowling's glorious past. Celebrating junior bowling, elevating junior bowlers. This is Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Live on tape from Jefferson Lanes in Jefferson, Georgia. This is Coach Randy, welcoming you to episode 99 of Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Back to the future. It took a real display of commitment by the parents to get their kids out here to Jefferson today, as the thunderstorms that drenched our paths made visibility low and freeway travel treacherous. But everybody made it in one piece, and we're looking forward to a fabulous experience. For many of our young people, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, as wood lanes are rapidly becoming a thing of the past, and this is certainly the only bowling center I've found within driving distance of Atlanta that still has wood lanes and its original 1960 vintage masking units which give the place its retro appearance and feel. After traveling this far and enduring the severe weather along the way, I figured we might as well get our money's worth. So I decided to go ahead and make this a rare double feature. So we staged two separate competitions. Later on today, we'll hold a two-game qualifier to feed stepladders in the bigs and littles division. But to get things started, I thought everyone might have some fun engaging in one of my favorite formats, and one we've only done once this season, the single ball eliminator. So that means we'll be crowning three champions today, one in the single ball elimination event and then we'll crown champions in both the bigs and the littles divisions in our main event later on. We'll introduce you to all 10 of our competitors as they come up to bowl for the first time in the single ball eliminator. So let's not wait any longer to get this thing started. I will tell you that we threw the 10 names into a hat and drew them to set the order of play. So it was totally random. Bowling first is Aiden Reynolds. Aiden is 13 and bowls with us at Bolero Roswell. He finished this season with a 198 league average. Last year as a U12, he won both the Pepsi tournament and the GYBT TOC in his age division. This year, competing in the U15 boys for the first time, he made a strong showing in both events, finishing fifth at Pepsi and seventh at the GYBT TOC last week. They will all bowl their first frame on the left lane. We're bowling on nine and 10 here at Jefferson Lanes today. Hold that one a little bit, gets nine out of it, and that's usually enough. Next in the order is Zeb Kane. Zeb is 13 and bowls at Stars and Strikes in Buford. He finished the season with a league average of 135. This is his first time bowling in a Prodigy Bowlers Tour event. Get our first look at this young man. Gives it the big loft and gets the big strike, so he's safe and on to frame two. Our next player is William Lane Moore. Lane is 16 and carries a 212 league average at AMF American in Conyers. This is Lane's first appearance on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, but he is very active in the tournament scene. Last week at the GYBT TOC, he finished a solid eighth in a U-17 boys field of 24. Keep bumping into him at GYBT events. He's been telling me for months that he was gonna come bowl prodigy with us. 
Well, there's eight, and that puts Lane on the bubble. Next up is Xavier Roy. Xavier may be the youngest kid we've ever had on Prodigy. He's six, turned seven in just a few days, hasn't started league bowling yet. In fact, today is the first time he's ever bowled without bumpers, and he's a little nervous about it. But he's got a whole bowling center full of people who are rooting for him today. They've only got bumpers on a couple of lanes here. And he needed them there. So that's a gutter ball for Xavier and maybe a quick exit for him. Next in the order is Allison Coriel. Allison is 17 and bowls out of Fun Bowl of Henry County in McDonough, Georgia. Allison posted a league average of 207 this year and is about to head off to the University of the Cumberlands in Williamsburg, Kentucky, where she's going on a full bowling scholarship. She finished third at Pepsi in April and fourth last week at the GYBT TOC. You saw her last week on our Prodigy coverage of the GYBT TOC. And Allison shreds the rack. So she's safely on to the second frame. Our next competitor is Christian Minnell. Christian turns 16 next month. If you're a regular Prodigy viewer, I know you've seen this guy enough times on Prodigy to know that he bowls in our program at Bolero Roswell, where he finished the season with a league average of 197. He finished fourth at last week's GYBT Tournament of Champions. Just recently acquired a new arsenal. And that hooks high and he gets eight. That's safe. Next up is Hunter Moffat. This 11-year-old carries the highest league average of any of our Junior Varsity League players at Bolero Roswell with a 164. He has a chance to catch Nick Dissinger as the winningest player on Prodigy Bowlers Tour this season. But he'll have to win both ends of our double feature today to do it. I guarantee you this two-hander will go for it. He was giving that one the fist pump when the ball was halfway down the lane. He knew it was good. Our next bowler is little Rowan Sautner. This young 10-year-old came to join our program at Bolero Roswell in the fall and just completed his first season bowling league, finishing with a 147 average. He's a multiple-time winner on Prodigy Bowlers Tour this season and finished fourth at Pepsi in April. He also hung around until very late on our last single ball elimination. Gets seven to start, but it's good enough, and he will move on to frame two. Next up is Emily Redding. For the past several years, Emily has been one of the most competitive youth bowlers in Georgia. She's been a perennial contender, seemingly from the time she first laced up a pair of bowling shoes. She's a member of the Louisiana Tech women's bowling team and is home for the summer where she was the number one qualifier at last week's GYBT TOC in the U-20 girls division. One on her first appearance on Prodigy a few months ago. Lays that ball down smooth, gets seven. It's good enough this time. Bowling in the anchor position in our order today is big Logan Mathis. Logan just completed his final season in youth league, bowling with us at Bolero Roswell and finishing with a 210 average. He's going to Emmanuel College this fall, where he'll be on the same bowling team with Peyton Smith, Josh Donahue, and Tony the Tigress, Tony McQuarrie. Back on April 13th, Big Logan became the first and only player to throw a natural 300 game on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Crosses over, gets nine, and that's good enough to move on to the second frame. 
So we will now switch lanes, move to the right lane. This is lane 10 over here. And we go back to the top of the order. It's Xavier who was eliminated in the first frame. And Aiden will lead off. Comes up high, gets seven. Will seven be enough? Hard to say. Well, Zeb, who bowls over at Stars and Strikes in Buford on the northeast side of the Atlanta area. Bit of an unknown quantity here. He gets seven. And now William Lane Moore. Well, I mentioned earlier, Lane has come up to me at these GYBT events. Whenever I've seen him, he says, I'm going to come bowl Prodigy one of these days. I'm going to get my mom to take me to bowl with you guys. But today he finally did. And here we are in Jefferson. His mom works out here. Thin, but he gets eight. And that's enough to move him on to frame three. Aiden and Zeb on the bubble at the moment. It's seven. And then next in the order is Allison. The characteristic of wood lanes is you've got to be mindful of where the track is. And of course, the track on most wood lanes is over on the right-hander's side between the second and third arrow where most of the play is. Wood lanes, unlike synthetics, get beat down pretty good. You can actually see the track on these lanes. They're about due for a resurface. And Eddie Kula, the proprietor here, told me that the next time they resurface these lanes will probably mean the end of the wood lanes. They'll probably lay down a sheet of synthetic over the top. Christian throwing the big bender, gets a strike, and he's safely on to the next frame. So it's still Aiden and Zeb with the low pinfall at the moment, watching anxiously. And Hunter mixes him up, and he gets a strike. And now Rowan Sautner. Crosses over, gets all 10, and he's pretty happy about it. Emily Reddick, every time you see Emily at the bowling center, chances are you're gonna see her mom and dad. Super supportive parents. Emily on the Louisiana Tech women's bowling team. And high flush. That's how they teach you to bowl at Louisiana Tech. So Aiden and Zeb, here's your last chance for redemption. It's big Logan Mathis. It's a high hit, but it's good for nine. And so we have a roll off. And it will be Aiden and Zeb. We're gonna eliminate one. And it'll come down to the roll off to determine who it is. Aiden playing that outside line.
goes high, gets eight. Well, that's better than the seven he got to put himself in the roll off with Zeb. Zeb needs nine or a strike to eliminate Aiden. Eight, they would continue the roll off. Seven's no good. But he gets them all. And how about Zeb moving on to frame three and eliminating Aiden from the competition. So now it'll be Zeb who is in the leadoff position as we move to frame three. And we're down to just eight players. This time Zeb crosses over. Gets nine. Well, Jefferson Lanes is only open like three days a week, and they opened up early for us on Saturday just so that we could come in here and do this today. Lane's ball cuts sharply, goes through the nose, breaks up the split, he gets nine. And for the time being, that's the bubble number. See what Allison can do here. Allison laying the ball down about the second arrow, about the tenth board. And I think she's going to find, as any of the players who are playing out there are going to find, that if they will move left and lay the ball down inside of the track area and then swing it out to the track, they'll have better success. What's happening, even though these lanes are freshly oiled, they will hook early. That's the characteristic of wood lanes, especially wood lanes that are due for a resurfacing. A lot of friction on the heads, unless you move left of the track area. Christian's playing left of the track, but he swings it out so far that it picks up the track. And we're bowling on the house shot here. And the farther right you throw it, the more it's going to hook. Christian now on the bubble with seven. Hunter high with that one, but gets eight, and that's enough. He's safely on to frame four. Well, most of these kids were born after synthetics went in, and we don't have any wood lanes in the Atlanta area. We had to drive all the way out here about 75 miles to find wood lanes. There's another eight count. Rowan leaves the 9-10. Won't have to shoot it. That may be what he's smiling about. Christian in the peanut gallery, rooting for Emily to get seven. I have a feeling she'll get more than that. She shreds the rack. So now Christian's fate is in Logan's hands.
Got a beat seven to send Christian to the showers. Boy, that ball is really hooking sharply. And these lanes are fresh. But it's Christian who will make the exit. He's eliminated. We now move to the right lane. And frame four. Back to the top of the order. Just seven players remain. And it'll be Zeb who leads off. Well, somehow he managed to get seven out of that. Seven's been borderline so far, we'll see. Now, unlike previous single ball elimination events that we've done on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, when we get down to the final two this time, we will not bowl a full 10-frame match like we usually do. Because this is a double feature, we'll just bowl one ball. There's a strike for Lane. That was the loudest strike we've heard today. Because we've got an entire second event to bowl after the single ball elimination, we made the decision to just bowl the last two as one ball, just like we do the rest of the single ball elimination. All right, Allison needs to beat seven. And gets them all. The light shaker. That looked like the old tossed salad strike. See what Hunter can do here. Now well, there's another seven count. So at the moment, Zeb and Hunter look like they're headed for a roll off. Now Rowan. Look at that thing turn left. He can't believe he got eight out of that, but he did, and he is safely on to frame five. If you notice the discoloration of the approaches, it's because they need to be resurfaced as well, but they're in ideal condition. They're very slippery. Emily crossing over, getting nine. So it's Zeb and Hunter who are on the bubble with just a seven count. Logan can send them to a roll off with eight, nine, or a strike. Seven would put him in the roll off, six or less, and he'd be done. With the big loft and the ball skidded. That's what they used to do on wood lanes. Give it a little extra loft to delay the hook, but Logan delayed it too late. And so it's Logan who is making the exit in frame four, and we move on to frame five. And then there were six. Well, you could see Zeb giving it a little fist pump. He knew that was good. It's nine. A 10 wouldn't go, but nine is usually enough. Next up, William Lane Moore. 
smooth two-hander. And boom! Big strike for Lane in the fifth, and he's safely on to frame six. Well, Allison Coriel will be heading off to the University of the Cumberlands this fall, where she will be going on a full bowling scholarship. How cool is that? And good for her. Ball picks up early. She's definitely gonna have to make an adjustment with her feet, move left. That eight count puts Allison on the bubble. Next up is Hunter. And look at that ball. Make a sharp left turn. Seven. So Allison can breathe easy as it's Hunter now who's going to be anxiously watching Rowan and Emily to see what happens. Rowan crosses over, gets a strike, and now he's safely on to frame six. So it's up to Emily to decide what's going to happen to Hunter here. She needs eight to move on. There's nine. And Hunter, you will have to wait for when we begin the second half of our double feature today because you're eliminated from the single ball elimination event. And now frame six begins on the right lane with Zeb. All right, there's seven. A little stress washing over his face as I think he knows the smaller the field becomes, the less likely a seven is going to get through, but you never know. Lane makes the pins explode. And that strike means he will be in the final four. Now Allison going through her routine. Once again, that ball is just picking up too early. And I just don't think you can lay the ball down that far right on these wood lanes, right in the track, and expect it to do anything but hook early. Rowan did the same thing. He kind of drifted to the right that time. The ball hooked early, but he gets nine. So Zeb, your moment of truth has arrived. Emily needs eight to move on to frame seven. Oh man, what a lucky break. But Emily gets nine, and she is safely on to frame seven. 
And it's the end of the line for Zeb, who managed to last six frames with this crowd. And we're down to the final four. Lane, Allison, Rowan, and Emily. And Lane with an emphatic statement as he just shreds the rack and my goodness, there was shrapnel flying everywhere. So Allison, knowing that she might need a strike to continue. Who knows? Crosses over, gets nine. We'll see if nine holds up. And now the little guy who has survived this long in this single ball elimination. Oh man, that so hard at the end he gets seven as the lights flicker and now it's up to Emily once again all she needs is eight and the lights are flickering some more and there they go and some of the lights are on some of the lights are off And now the pin setters have gone off. And we're not sure exactly what is happening. We did just have a power outage while we were filming Prodigy, I don't know, about a month ago, something like that, when we were at Bolero Roswell. See the emergency lights are on, so it's on backup. So you heard the lane maintenance guy tell us that we are on emergency power. The backup generator is on, and it doesn't have sufficient power to run the pin setters. But apparently the power is out here in the building. Tristan wants to be a, a meteorologist. He can come in and do the, the, the prodigy, the prodigy traffic and weather every 10 minutes on the edge. Yeah, that's what we need. Tristan to do traffic and weather together. All right. Well, we're going to take a break and maybe the power will come back on. In the afternoon, when things slow down, when you're wondering what to do. Let's go! Go bowling! Nothing brings people together or makes friends so fast as bowling. So call a friend. Bowl Brunswick tomorrow. Well, we're back at Jefferson Lanes in Jefferson, Georgia, where a line of severe thunderstorms has knocked out the power. The lighting you see is coming from an emergency backup generator, which doesn't have the capacity to run the pin setters. So we're in a holding pattern, and while we wait, Let's travel back in time, back when automatic pin setters were first bursting on the scene. It was the late 1940s, and Brunswick was a little behind AMF in coming with an automatic pin setter. So the Brunswick Balky Colander Company released this industrial film for bowling proprietors.
is our business. And our business has been a part of the American scene for more than a hundred years. For more than a century, we've helped make American recreation pay for those who have chosen it as their life work. It all got started back in 1845, when John M. Brunswick, a Cincinnati cabinet maker, decided that American recreation could not only be a sound investment, but also a career in which a man could take real pride. And right from the start, that pride in our products has guaranteed our steady growth to a position of unchallenged leadership. Today, Brunswick's products are known as the best there is in bowling, and rightfully so, for nothing but the highest quality materials go into their making. Every manufacturing process is performed with patient skill and care that ensures top quality and keeps the Brunswick name a byword for excellence wherever bowlers meet. In the making of our well-known pins, the choicest hard white maple is carefully selected shaped and smoothed to exact specifications for the precision playing that bowlers have learned to count on. Pins are carefully weighed, inspected, screened, and designated king, queen, or duke. Next, they're painted and reinforced by Brunswick's infrared armorizing treatment to give them a dirt-resistant finish that's tough and durable. They get their titles, and once again are inspected to ensure unsurpassed quality. Finally, the coronation, when the kingpins of bowling pins get their coveted crowns, red crowns that tell the bowling world they're tough. But even with the best there is in pins, bowling would be no fun and not nearly so successful if you had to use just any old ball. Brunswick sees to it that you don't. Brunswick's super accurate precision balanced mineralite ball is ground to split thousands roundness for true travel from fingertips to standing pins. A final polishing and inspection weighing promised perfect performance, better scores. But it would be short-sighted indeed to be content with doing nothing more than making top quality products. So Brunswick has built its lasting business, solidified its position of preeminence in the industry by casting its lot with that of the proprietor, by promoting his business, by furthering constantly the success of the man who plays host to the bowler. This familiar scene is duplicated daily in communities all over America and in many remote spots far beyond our shores. This business partnership between the Brunswick Balky Colony Company and the independent recreation businessman is based on mutual respect and cooperation that goes back many generations. We have seen our proprietor friends accept the opportunities and the responsibilities of the recreation business with thoroughness that has guaranteed them the high regard of their guests and patrons and the esteem of their communities. We too have had responsibilities to accept not only the responsibility of giving the business the finest bowling products that can be made, but also the responsibility of experimenting endlessly, of seeking tirelessly for new and better ways of turning out higher quality products and improvements that will produce more pleasure and profit from bowling. A very definite responsibility has been to see that no new product is turned over to our business partners until it has proven itself beyond a doubt. This is as true today as it was back in 1906, when the old wooden balls were replaced by Brunswick's familiar mineralite ball. Here was real progress, 
unhampered by balls that might have looked good but failed to hold up under continued use. Time has always meant money in the bowling operation, and our engineers have been working on the pin setting problem for years on end. And when we finally developed a mechanical device to aid the pin boy, a device that would help set up pins faster and prove beyond question that it would work, we offered it to the bowling business, but not before it was ready. And it was the same with B1. It took a lot more to develop this machine than appears on the surface. But when we said it's ready, we were sure it would work. More than 25 years ago, we had an automatic pin setting machine operating in the field for many months. And it was almost satisfactory, but not perfect. That's why we never released it to the industry. This machine took years to develop. And more years of work have gone into new ideas, new inventions. A few years ago, we began to see the daylight. And last year, we were so sure of ourselves, we promised to have our automatic pin setter ready for you this year. We are frank to admit, we haven't got it. Oh, we've got something to show you. Two machines, as a matter of fact. But we're going to be as honest with you as we've always been. They simply aren't ready. Much time and money has gone into the development of this machine, and it's really a wonder to watch. For example, it can tell the difference between a strike, a spare, or a gutter ball, and act accordingly. First, let's see what happens when a bowler rolls a strike. The balls drop into the pit and automatically engages an elevator, which returns the ball. The pin setting mechanism descends to a search position, finding no pins left standing, knows it as a strike and returns to the top position. During the operation, the alley has been swept of all dead wood. Meanwhile, the guard protects the mechanism from any wild ball that might be rolled. The machine deposits a new set of pins on the bed, the guard rises and the alley is ready for the next ball. So much for the strike. Now let's see what happens with a spare. The ball drops into the pit and is automatically returned. The mechanism descends, finds pins standing, picks them up, and holds them while the sweep clears away the dead wood. It then places them back in their exact position. The guard rises and the alley is ready for the second ball. Again, the ball engages the elevator. The guard descends to its safety position. The sweep travels to the end of the alley and the machine places a new set of pins for the next train. Suppose the pins are knocked out of position, off their spots, what happens? Let's see. The mechanism picks them up and allows the sweep to clear the alley of any dead wood and puts them back down right where they were. How about when a ball rolls into the gutter? The guard unit descends, the mechanism comes down, finds all pins standing, returns, and the alley is set for the next ball. There certainly weren't any bugs in that operation, and there haven't been for quite some time. But we're still not satisfied that under the load of constant use, it will always work so perfectly. That's why we are not offering it yet. Now let's take a look at our other machine. This machine is slightly different from the one we've just seen. Let's first watch a strike cycle. The red bar moves to its guard position and then sweeps the alley. The mechanism records a strike and sets 10 new pins. The alley is ready for the next frame. 
Now for a spare. The pin setting mechanism descends, finds pin standing. Picks them up while the sweep clears the alley. The pin setter then places the remaining wood back into position, rises, and the alley is ready for the second ball. The machine goes to work again, sweeps away all dead wood and places a complete new set of pins for the next frame. Next, a gutter ball. The machine descends, discovers all pins are standing, immediately rises and the game continues. This machine is also a time saver when only the seven or ten pin is hit. The machine knows there is no dead wood and rises as in the gutter cycle. From what we've seen, you might get the idea that Brunswick is ready to sell an automatic pin setter. But as we said before, we're still not satisfied. And until we are, until we feel beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we have an automatic pin setting machine that will give constant trouble-free performance day in and day out, we're not going to make it available. We'd like to show you the intimate working details of these two machines so you could see just how they operate. But many new and ingenious ideas are involved and we simply cannot take the chance of revealing too much until everything is fully protected. We think we're well on the way to achieving a goal which we've been seeking for 25 years. That's why we've wanted to let you in on the progress we've made. But we still can't make definite promises as to when we will have a perfect machine. A machine equal in quality to our complete line of equipment and supplies. An automatic pin setter that we consider as good a product as the Brunswick Red Crown Pin and the Brunswick Mineralite Ball. After 100 years of enviable success, we're not going to compromise with quality now, and we're not going to ask anyone else to, who makes bowling his business. Well, as you can see, the kids have found ways to pass the time while we wait for power to be restored here at Jefferson Lanes, where we're hearing from police that the storms have knocked over trees in the area, which may be the culprit in knocking out the power here. So we'll take a quick break and be back in a minute. Hello, friend. I'd like to bowl a few lines. Brought your own bowling pins? Why, sure. Folks who know the score know you get more action from these pins. See that big red crown that goes all around? Means it's a real red crown Dura King bowling pin made by Brunswick. Makes the game more fun. Now, why don't you have these high-scoring pins, friend? Oh, we got them. <laughs> Look at the plaque. Brunswick. Dora King, red crown pins. You've got them all right. Can't wait. Just love to bowl against those pins. <laughs> all over America, more people are bowling against red crown than any other pins. Just look for, ask for the big red crowns. Dora King bowling pins by Brunswick. The National Weather Service in North Georgia has issued a significant weather advisory that includes several counties in northern Georgia, including Jackson County, where you'll find the town of Jefferson. Those in the area are advised to stay indoors until the storm passes.
Well, we're still a ways away from getting power back on here at the bowling center. But the backup generator is giving us enough light that we can at least get some bowling in. You've heard of 10-pin bowling. Well, Blair Reynolds, Aiden's dad, seems to have the right line bowling a game of kid pins. The pins refuse to fall. Blair, I thought I thought you said you'd bowled in this house. <laughs> Not down the approach, I. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We need we need some pinfall this time. I've got a pinky and a ring finger. A pinky and a ring finger. There you go. The lanes here at Jefferson Lanes were built in the early 1960s, and the masking units you see and the fiberglass bench seating in the settee and spectator areas were all part of the Brunswick Gold Crown line of bowling center equipment. Back in the late 50s, Brunswick released this short film to bowling proprietors promoting this sleek, modern new line of equipment. Introducing the American way of life on the threshold of the golden 60s. Color, style, comfort, utility, and convenience. Recreation, fun. These are the ultimate desires of today, tomorrow, and the years ahead of us. Much sought after features in our everyday surroundings that are relaxing, refreshing, and stimulating. And these are the very same features that Brunswick is building into the new dynamic recreation centers, where bowling and wholesome fun are the prime attraction. Here, for an era of increased leisure, is a new concept in color and custom-coordinated equipment created by Brunswick designers and engineers. But whatever the creative concept, quality has always been a prime consideration. Time-tested Brunswick quality from the hand-selected, carefully dried bedstock that goes into the construction of these lanes to every piece of material that goes into the building of every piece of Brunswick equipment. Every item is quality created by engineers and design specialists whose never-ending search for quality has not only been the key to increased profits for bowling proprietors, but has also increased the pleasure of bowling for men and women of all ages in all walks of life. Here for today, tomorrow, and the years to come is Brunswick's concept of custom design, introducing a colorful new world to bowlers, set off with convenience, with comfort, with style, with color, and always with it all, Brunswick's high standard of quality. Here is Brunswick's striking new gold crown line. Designer colors that provide architect, decorator, and owner with an opportunity to coordinate color and equipment and thus create a custom-designed atmosphere to suit individual tastes and needs. Six basic Brunswick colors have been created to provide the proper atmosphere for recreation. And three graduated shades of each color produce the illusion of one monochromatic color, taking advantage of variations in distance and lighting. Here is the warmth of coral, the richness of gold, the quiet relaxation of green, the calm coolness of blue, the crisp 
contemporary look of classic white and the pleasure-packed attractiveness of tangerine. These six coordinated colors are Brunswick's unique and distinctive contribution to bowling, developed after intensive research and investigation of color preference. Their balanced values allow the architect and decorator to create any atmosphere desired. It is possible to use the colors singly or in any number of combinations, depending upon the selection of equipment and the decorative scheme that is desired. But regardless of choice, all of the colors complement the light, sculptured look of Brunswick's fabulous new gold crown line of bowling equipment and trim functional seating here is the bright light atmosphere of refreshing recreation. Here is comfort, the Brunswick fiberglass bowler seating, constructed to fit natural body contours. All seating arrangements are now provided with backs. Maximum comfort even for scoring. The correct height, the correct writing angle, the correct working surface, a larger area, with a durable, easy-to-clean melamine top, harmonizing with each of the new Brunswick colors. The improved, exclusive Brunswick Telescore is unmatched in the field. Brilliant, crisp projection. And the auxiliary light for open-play score sheets is another first that Brunswick brings to bowling. Also, the new simplified optical system is easy to operate, easy to clean, and remarkably easy to maintain. Overall design simplicity brings not only a smartness of line, but also an unobstructed approach to the ball return. And Brunswick's exclusive Subway Cluster Return is another great time saver that keeps the game moving. For here, each player's ball waits at the same convenient spot every time. The stainless steel tray has a 12 ball capacity to accommodate league competition. But these adjustable ball stops conveniently adapt the cluster for a reduced number of players. Here is time-saving convenience in keeping with the design harmony that adds fun to the game and potentially greater profits to the proprietor. But design harmony doesn't always include the players and trip-ups at the foul line are electronically detected and signaled by the telefoul, a unit now completely self-contained with buzzer and light at the foul line where they belong. Nothing to distract other bowlers, no excess wiring to the pits, allowing more trouble-free operation, labor-saving installation, and minimum maintenance. And with the subway return, the enclosure gracefully delineates the path of the ball, and the exclusive new power lift not only eliminates the possibility of trapped balls beneath the surface, but also delivers the ball quietly and safely at virtually zero velocity. Where the subway in-line ball return section is preferred or required, Brunswick offers a beautifully designed unit fully coordinated with the custom gold crown line. Again, Brunswick's revolutionary positive power lift is employed to provide long, efficient service. Only a subway in-line unit can provide the approach division favored by many bowlers and still provide four and a half feet of open approach for unobstructed follow-through. There is also the newly designed surface in-line return, popular with many bowlers and proprietors. Sleek, elegant, it has that Brunswick stamp of quality from stem to stern with hand dryer built in at terminal end. Nothing to slow the play, nothing to interrupt the fun. As for the new single lane pin setter masks that set the color and design theme, here is sculptured classic beauty. The perfect screen between the bowler and the pit. 
Here is precise lane definition with neither monotony nor distracting detail. Suitable for larger installations, another Brunswick first, the uniquely designed custom twin lane masking unit that separates lanes in pairs. But double or single, these masking units provide a correctly lighted target area. Nothing to distract from the serious bowler's game. Nor from the fun of chalking up a strike. And with the quality produced, reliable Brunswick automatic pin setter in action, there's never a hitch from frame to frame. For finer bowling, maximum profit, the Brunswick automatic pin setter gives smoother, quieter, more dependable and accurate pin setting. Amazing for its simplicity of design and construction, for the reliability of its operation, the Brunswick Automatic is the heart of the Gold Crown custom equipped lanes. Only the Brunswick Automatic embodies complete mechanical direction of the entire pin setting function with these exclusive features. Gentle rocking action of the pit conveyor moves the ball and the pins from the pit to the ball and pin elevator. The Brunswick Automatic is the only pin setter with an individual ball elevator for each machine. Faster ball return is guaranteed, providing increased lineage. Here is the pin elevator quickly removing pins from the pit, preventing excess joggling and wear. Brunswick's exclusive pin turret ensures immediate spotting of 10 new pins following each strike or second ball. The magic brain guides the Brunswick automatic pin setter. Through simple mechanical operation, it respots standing pins or sets 10 new ones. And the exclusive Brunswick scissor deck operation provides wider pin spotting range than any other pin setting machine. Never a pin off the exact spot. All of these exclusive Brunswick features are powered by a single one horsepower electric motor for added economy, defect free operation, maximum profit, and more enjoyable bowling. Yes, Brunswick is automatically the world's finest pin setter. Every element of the remarkable Gold Crown line is engineered for maximum enjoyment of the game, as well as maximum profit for the proprietor of the modern recreation center. And as important as the profit-making potential is to the proprietor, Brunswick offers him the additional exclusive opportunity of custom selection. With architect and decorator, the proprietor can now build a bowling center, custom tailored to suit his individual tastes and desires. And this same Brunswick customized coordination of color and styling extends even beyond the playing area. For instance, the completely restyled Brunswick automatic ball cleaning and polishing machine provides a necessary service for bowler and source of profit to proprietor. Designed to fit flush against walls or in corners, the machine occupies a minimum of space and is built for years of trouble-free life. Customer style locker rooms feature color, roominess and convenience. There's a choice between the standard two bowler ball and shoe lockers and Brunswick's convenient new two bowler wardrobe lockers. Both are made of rugged steel, durable but lightweight, with cast aluminum doors. Sections of small lockers and large lockers may be combined with door colors in classic white, alternated with any of the other five custom colors. For shoe changing convenience in the locker room, Brunswick provides comfortable, custom-style locker benches of durable, easy-to-clean fiberglass with chrome-plated steel legs. And each bench features plenty of room for holding bowling balls. Everywhere in the modern recreation center is the ideal combination of pleasing atmosphere and functional utility. Everywhere is the feeling of fun and recreation. And Brunswick's incomparable gold crown line provides all the features for maintaining that light, bright, fun-loving spirit of the game. 
With the choice of six inspired colors and a coordinated selection of equipment, Brunswick makes it possible to create personalized, distinctive bowling centers such as these. Now for the first time, each proprietor has the unique opportunity to custom design his own recreation center. For now, for the first time, he has the choice of single or twin lane masking units. The surface in line, the subway in line, or the cluster ball returns. Bowler and spectator seating in an unlimited variety of arrangements. And other Brunswick exclusive features, all color coordinated. It is this personal custom tailored touch of distinction that will lure and hold an increasing number of bowlers today and in the promising years ahead. And it is Brunswick's promise to continue to provide new highs in pleasure for the bowlers and new highs in profits for the proprietors. A Brunswick quality created combination that will make the bowling 60s a golden reality. So I'm standing outside of Jefferson Lanes in Jefferson, Georgia, and you won't believe this. The power's been out for like an hour. We were seven frames into taping this week's Prodigy Bowlers Tour episode, and the lights flickered on and off for a little while, and then they went out. And it's just, we got no power. We're waiting for Georgia Power to get us hooked back up. So in the meantime, we're just waiting. And it's still raining out here, but it's not raining like it was earlier. I mean, it was really coming down on our way up here. It was kind of dangerous, actually. But, you know, just it is what it is. We can't really control Mother Nature. But we're waiting for the power to come back on, and hopefully it'll be back on soon, and we'll be able to continue taping Prodigy. But as it is, everything's on hold. These days, popular teenagers all over the country are finding fun and good companionship in America's most wholesome game. It's the new rock and roll. Roll means bowl. All the fellas and gals are out bowling. Rock and rolling means bowling. Bowling means Brunswick. Every guy and gal should know the name. Brunswick. So join the kids and start in bowling. It's the newest rock and rolling. Swinging this teenage game And Brunswick is the name that makes the game America Swinging this teenage game And Brunswick is the name that makes the game We're a little more than an hour after the lights went out in Georgia and Georgia Power finally restored the power here at Jefferson Lanes. It took a little while for the good people here at Jefferson Lanes to reboot the system and get everything back up and running. And in fact, as of this moment, the computer system in the bowling center appears to have taken a hit from the storm. And it's unclear as to whether we're gonna have access to automatic scoring today. But the good news is we don't need it for what we're doing right now with the single ball eliminator, as we're keeping that score by hand anyway. But when we begin the second part of our double feature today, we will need scoring. But hey, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. For the time being, we now return to the action of our single ball eliminator. Now just to reset things, when we left off, Rowan had just thrown the last ball and got seven pins, which put him on the bubble for elimination. So now, after an hour-long delay and without a single warm-up ball, the pressure falls squarely on Emily Reddig, who needs eight pins to eliminate Rowan and move on in our single ball eliminator. This is like calling timeout on a field goal kicker before he tries to kick the game winner in the closing seconds. Emily needs seven for a roll-off with Rowan, eight to move on.
Talk about a pressure shot. She only had to wait a little over an hour to make it, but make it she did. And Emily with an eight count. That is good enough. And she is moving on to frame eight. And she puts an end to Rowan's bid to win the single ball eliminator. So we're down to just three. Lane Moore, Allison Coriel, and Emily Reddig. Uh-oh. Good shot. <laughs> Not what he wanted. As he takes some ribbing from his friends, Big Logan calls out, good shot. And that sets up the very real possibility that we might have our first ever all-girls final in a mixed event. There's a crossover for Allison. Now remember, these kids did not have any warm-up balls before this started up again after the power outage. Emily's already thrown one shot on the left lane, but Lane and Allison just threw their first shots after the break. And that's wide, but she gets seven, and that sends Lane home. Well, not home. We'll keep him around for the second part of our double feature today, but Allison and Emily will be moving on to the final frame. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, Unlike previous single ball eliminations that we've done where we settle the final pairing in a full 10 frame match, since we do have a second half of the double feature today, we're going to decide this with a single ball frame just like all the other frames. So, puts all the pressure on one ball by each of these players. Allison, first to go. You got that one out a little wider, and it seems like the farther right you throw it, the harder it hooks. So Allison with a seven count, and that leaves the door wide open for Emily. Eight or better, and she's our champion in the single ball elimination event. And will sign the coveted trophy pin for the second time this season. Little double dribble. It hooks high, but she gets eight. And that is a winner right there. Not her best shot, but she'll take it. So, congratulations to Emily Reddig. She's our winner in the single ball eliminator. She'll sign the pin, and then we'll turn our attention to the second half of our double feature, next. When pro bowlers Johnny Petraglia, Judy Sutar, and Tommy Hudson helped design these Brunswick balls, they put more than the names on the line. They put their reputations and their futures on it. Because every time they step up to bowl, they bowl to win. That's why everything they know about bowling and everything we know was built into these signature balls from Brunswick. The Signature Series, a new breed of bowling balls born to win. Check out the whole family of winners at your Brunswick dealer. It's the second annual Prodigy Bowlers Tour Tournament of Champions. All the winners from the 2018-19 season are invited to AMF Woodstock for the mother of all stepladders, as one winner will claim the coveted trophy pin as their own. It's the one major on the Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Then, one week later, it's our final big blowout of the season, as we invite the grown-ups to bowl with the kids in our third annual Adult Youth Scotch Doubles 9-Pin No Tap Race to 300 on the house shot. If you have a connection to youth bowling, either you are a youth bowler, or you're the parent or grandparent of a youth bowler, or you're a coach, you're invited to bowl with us Saturday, June 29th at Bolero Roswell. Check in at 11.30 a.m. Qualifying begins at noon. It's our biggest event of the year and our one Parents Appreciation Day each season. 
So bring your youth bowler and your bowling ball to Bolero Roswell, June 29th at 1130. Well, it seems somehow fitting that the winner of the single ball elimination here in Jefferson would be the person on whom the lights went out. She survived an hour-long delay and a pressure-packed first shot coming out of the power outage. But Emily Reddig made the shots she needed to make. Rowan proved once again that he has a knack for staying around in these single ball eliminators. One of these days, we're gonna have a little win one of them. Zeb Kane made a strong showing in his first appearance on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, finishing fifth. Now, we still have our second half of today's double feature yet to go. But before we get to that, there's one other little matter to tend to first. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Emily Reddick, now a two-time winner <laughs> on Prodigy Bowlers Tour in 2018-19. Won the single ball elimination here at Jefferson Lanes, and now she gets to sign the coveted trophy pen. And this makes you a two-time winner this season. Yes, it does. That will improve your seating at the Tournament of Champions if you can make it. I believe I'm going to. It's the 22nd. I don't know why I wouldn't. So. At AMF Woodstock. Yep. Tell us about your first year of college. Bowling. It was very really good. It was really busy, a little crazy at times, but it's definitely worth it. It was very good. Um, Did you learn anything new? Yeah. Like <laughs> what? More about like my game and all that, especially bowling wise, and that for me, I still continue to work hard, especially in like my education, like bowling and all that. And I was able to maintain a 4.0 GPA this year, awesome. which I was very proud of. So. You should be. Mm -hmm. So. Well, we're proud of you for being a winner again on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Yay! Thank you. Now it's time we turn our attention to the second part of our double feature today. The main reason we came out to Jefferson. The 10 kids in our field today were separated into two divisions. Six bigs and four littles. They bowled a two-game qualifier. The top two in the littles and the top four in the bigs would advance to a championship round stepladder in their respective divisions. So let's meet the kids who advanced to the championship round. A bit later on, you'll see the bigs compete. Their number four qualifier is Allison Coriel of McDonough, Georgia. She'll face our number three qualifier, Big Logan Mathis of Gainesville, Georgia. The winner of that opening match will move on to bowl our number two qualifier, Aiden Reynolds of Dahlonega, Georgia. And the winner of that semifinal match will bowl for the title in the bigs today against our tournament leader, Christian Minnell of Roswell, Georgia. And that's our field in the bigs. But we'll begin with the championship match in the littles hitting our number two qualifier, Rowan Sautner of Alpharetta, Georgia, against our number one qualifier, Hunter Moffat of Roswell, Georgia. These two are good friends and have met many times before, both on Prodigy and on Rowan's YouTube channel. And each one has won his share of times. Hunter's average is a little higher, so you would think he'd have a slight advantage. But don't sleep on this little Rowan kid. He strung together a 10-bagger on Prodigy a few weeks ago, and Hunter shot 268 on Prodigy about a month ago. So they're both capable of stringing strikes. And there's one to start for Hunter. As he puts that one high flush. Here it is again. Six-step approach. A little skip step like you see with a lot of two-handers. And that was right where it needed to be. All right, Rowan. A little off balance at the line. Not sure if he stuck or if he slipped, but he got nine. Easy spares are a good thing when you make them. 
And he makes that one. So each player with a mark to begin. And that's usually a good thing. Rowan moves over to the left lane. And goes right to the pocket. And there's a solid strike in the second. Take another look at this one. Rowan also with a six-step delivery. And down they go. Slaps out the 10. Hunter's ball breaks sharply and goes through the nose. And now he's got a cluster. The three, six, nine, ten. This one can be a little tricky. You gotta put the ball on the three and six. The six will get the ten, but you gotta get high enough on the three pin that the ball can drive on through and get the nine. And that one doesn't quite get up enough. Deflects, and now he's got an open frame. The hunter moves back over to the left lane. And that's as good as you can do it right there. Hunter with strikes in the first and third, so he obviously has figured out that left lane. Now Rowan going for a double. And gets it on the Brooklyn side. And a happy young man. That gives him a 22 pin lead early in the match. I have to admit, I'm a little surprised he's not throwing his blue hammer urethane. This tropical is a weak reactive ball, but I think on these wood lanes, urethane might be better. That thing breaks high, and this spare, very similar to the one that Hunter just missed. It's really the same spare, but without the 10. Make it pretty much the same. Put it fairly high on the three pin. Just enough off to the side that you can get the six. But you gotta get the back pin. And he's high enough on the three pin, but chops it right off the six. And so, they exchange opens on very similar leaves. And now Hunter with a strike up in the third has a chance to take the lead. If he can double. Oh, that seven pin twirled around and thought about taking out the four. But that's a urethane ball Hunter's throwing, I believe. That's his pitch black, if I'm not mistaken. And even it is hooking sharply at the back end. Got just the four. Oh, and it hooks by. He threw that thing out to the right, expecting it to hook. Didn't expect it to hook that much though, so another open frame. Little off balance at the line, but another strike on the left lane. And he's thrown three balls on the left, all of them strikes. I think Hunter would like to finish the game on the left lane. But Rowan up in the fifth with a 19-pin lead. I think he thought he'd given it plenty of room that time to the right. But it broke sharply, and now the 3-6-10 we've seen Players having trouble with these three six combinations on the right. See what Rowan can do with this. He chops another one. 
So I think the lesson here is avoid the three six combination. Back to back opens and now the lead is just eight. But Rowan finds the pocket on the left lane and gets another strike. Let's watch his footwork. That time he went with five steps. Sometimes he goes with six. Through the nose. Leaves the 10. Hunter will take his plastic ball to go at the corner pin. And goes straight at the spare and converts it. And now he's back up on the lane that he has owned so far this match. positions his feet. And there's another one. He's got that left lane wired. You heard him say, I love that lane. I guess so. All right, Rowan with a strike up. And grow the lead to 18. And that's exactly what he does. That nine pin was late in falling, but down it went. Watch his reaction. Can he get three in a row? Not like that. Through the nose, and this time the 310, the baby split. Got to put the ball on the right side of the three pin. The farther left you stand, the easier this is. You narrow the gap between the pins. See how it widens the farther right you get? He plays it correctly from the left side. Oh, but it just runs by the three pin. So another open frame. And now Hunter is within four with a strike up and he can take the lead with a strike here. And there it is, he gets his first strike on the right lane. And that was a good time for it. Watch it again. Just to the right of the fourth arrow, out to about the sixth or seventh board. And look at that ball, it finishes behind the eight pin. And another strike, he has struck every time on the left lane in this game. big that ball looked like it tried to read early for Rowan hooks sharply through the nose and he leaves the 10 pin he's down by 16 he can't afford an open here gotta be careful with this But he misses to the left. And that's going to be trouble. The best Rowan can do is 179. Well, now at 169, if he makes this and strikes on the fill. Hunter sitting at 156. If he throws two balls in the gutter in the 10th frame, and I would assume he's not going to do that. Look out. 
hangs on just enough. These guys are not used to the back of the approach being a step up or sometimes a step down if you fall off. There's a strike to finish off a 169 for Rowan. But now Hunter's just going to need a few pins to polish this one off and claim the title. That is seven, and that will do it. Hunter has won the Littles division here in Jefferson. Rowan steps up to congratulate him. These two are good buddies. And finally, a conversion on a 3-6 combination. The 3-6-10 goes down, and now Hunter with a spare in the 10th has a possible 193 if he fills it up here. Hi, it's going to be a 191, but that is plenty good enough. And we will get Hunter to sign the coveted trophy pin when we return. And then the bigs do battle. Now, bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your bowling center with Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts and sportswear, including collared shirts with the Prodigy logo printed on the back to show that you support junior bowling. Check out the entire assortment of Prodigy t-shirts in the Brownswick store. Visit ProdigyBowlersTour.com to see the selection. See the Ash Gray Celebrating Junior Bowling Elevating Junior Bowlers t-shirt or the Who Will Win the Coveted Trophy Pin t-shirt. Or maybe you'd want the one that says, I've come to get my bowl on, right on the front of the shirt. Or simply, bowl me. There's a t-shirt that says, bowling. You probably don't get it because it's mainly for smart people. And if you're a proud parent with a junior bowler, we've got a t-shirt just for you. And how about this t-shirt? You're bowling an eighth grader. Prepare to meet defeat. Available in grades one through nine, most in both adult and kid sizes. And finally, the shirt that reads, bowl better, have more fun, take lessons. Then maybe you can keep up with me. The Brownswick store is powered by the people at Cafe Press. And all of these shirts are available right now. Just go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com and click on the link to be taken right to the store. PayPal and credit cards accepted. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. Get your bowl on and bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your house. Order now. Go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. Before we visit with our final winner in the Littles before the Prodigy TOC on the 22nd, let's take a look at how we got here. After the power outage and the completion of our single ball eliminator, the Bigs and Littles bowled a two-game qualifier to seed players into the final step ladders. In the Littles division, after the first game, Hunter was in the lead, but Rowan was clinging to a narrow four-pin edge over Zeb for the two-spot. And as I mentioned earlier, today was the first time ever that Xavier had bowled without bumpers. In game two, Hunter established himself as the clear leader, and Rowan pulled away from Zeb for that runner-up spot. But the young fellow from Stars and Strikes in Buford let it be known that he'd be back. And then in our championship match, after Rowan led most of the way, Hunter pulled ahead late and then sealed it away at the end. So congratulations once again to Hunter Moffat. This young prodigy is like the tide. He just keeps rolling in. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. The winner once again. Can I sign right here? You can sign anywhere you want because there's only one more signature going on it. Well, there is a spot on the very tip top. Right here. Wait, what's today? It's June. Today is 6-8-2019. 6 8 
And Rowan, you got close. But it's Hunter's Day. And he's your champion Yay. at Jefferson Lanes. Congratulations, buddy. There is one more champion to crown, one more signature to go on the coveted trophy pin before we give it away at the Prodigy Bowlers Tour Tournament of Champions on June 22nd. Our six bigs also bowled a two-game qualifier. We told you earlier who qualified for the stepladder, but before we bring you their championship round, let's go back and see how we got to this point. One of the byproducts of the storm and the power outage was that the computer system inside Jefferson Lanes seemed to take a hit, and we weren't sure if we were going to have the benefit of automatic scoring during our qualifying round. But you know what? We came to Jefferson today to get the old school experience of bowling on wood lanes with the old vintage 1960 masking units and furniture, so I figured let's go all the way for the old school experience and I asked our parents if anyone would volunteer to keep score by hand during the qualifying round. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Alicia Reddick. Hi guys. She used to be the youth director at Stars and Strikes in Coming. She is Emily Reddick's mom and pretty awesome volunteer because just look what she's doing. She's keeping score by hand because the scoring system went out with the storm. So she's keeping score for this pair of lanes. Whoops. And down here, here's Emily's dad. Oh. Hello. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Blair Reynolds, scorekeeper. And he is Aiden's dad, and he also is a volunteer scorekeeper since the scoring system went out. And he's got this pair of lanes. Hey, look, it's, it's Emily Reddick. Hello. <laughs> You know, we came to Jefferson today on what would have been my mom's 98th birthday today. And seeing Leisha Reddig and Blair Reynolds keep score for these kids kind of sent me back to when I used to bowl Junior League and my mom would sit at the scoring table with the yellow grease pencil in hand and mark the plastic score sheet that would be projected overhead by the Brunswick Telescore system. As the qualifying round unfolded, Christian Minnell got off to a fast start, firing a 224 his opening game, while Aiden Reynolds was right there with him and Allison Coriel was not far behind. By the time the second game began, the in-house scoring system finally came online. Christian held steady with a 198, while Aiden fell back a bit, but his nearest pursuer, Allison, fell back even more, allowing Big Logan to pass her while Allison hung on to edge out Lane for the fourth and final spot in the stepladder. So, here we go with match one of our championship round in the bigs, as our number four qualifier, Allison Coriel, takes on our number three qualifier, Big Logan Mathis. Logan was the higher qualifier, so he had the choice of starting lanes. He wants to finish first, so he's going to send Allison to lead off on the left lane. Now, while we are bowling on lanes 9 and 10, the kids who are coming up to bowl will be staying loose on lanes 7 and 12 on either side of us. Allison looks like she finally made that move to the left. But this time the ball didn't quite face up and she leaves a 10 pin. And it looks like it did not score in the overhead scoring. We know that the scoring system is working now. 
but apparently your friendly local tournament director, that would be me, didn't quite know how to engage the scoring system, and we've enlisted the help of Blair Reynolds, Aiden's dad, who used to bowl league in this house, to come in and get this working. And while I hate for Allison to have to wait to shoot this 10 pin, Got a few more keystrokes before this thing is ready to go. But I think we've got it rolling now. So Allison will move to the left side of the lane and go cross lane to shoot the 10. She runs by the 10 pin, and that's an open to start. I hope the delay didn't have anything to do with that. Unfortunate that that happened, but it happened. So big Logan Mathis, who lives in Gainesville, just down the road from Jefferson, so he had the shortest distance to travel. And he goes high with his opening toss and leaves the six pin. Logan, one of the players who naturally is playing deep inside on the lane, that's where you need to play these wood lanes. Covers the six, no problem. So a spare to begin and an early lead or big. Well, on a few shots today, we're going to clock the ball speed of these competitors and see how it rates. First, we see how long it stays on the lane, and then we see the miles per hour. That shot, 17.9. That's unofficial. Our estimate. I flush. Now you would expect Allison would have a little slower ball speed. Let's see if we can check it out here. Solid strike. Ball's on the lane a little longer, so it's a slower ball speed, 15 miles an hour. Here's that shot again. Watch the six pin, the second one from the right. It's going to go against the right wall, and it'll come back out and slap out the 10. Allison hits the rosin bag. You want a nice, dry feel with your hand. You can hold that ball softly. Breaks up the split. Seven was last to go. Now it's just the six. She goes with this swirly ball that will lull you into a trance. The spear in the third for Allison. As Big Logan moves to the right lane, working on a strike, and extend his lead with a double here. And down they go. A ripper. Watch this one again. 
in slow motion. He's playing deep inside. Just to the right of the fourth arrow. Swings that thing out to about five. Into the swish spot, and down they go. And another solid strike by Big Logan. Watch those gold bowling shoes. He drifts a little to the left. Rips it. Some people have asked what's the difference between the old Brunswick A pin setters and their more modern a2, which really became the workhorse of the bowling industry for many years. We have the A2s over at our house, Bolero Roswell, as Allison goes right through the nose, leaving the 4-6-10. Well, aside from the fact that the A2s run a little faster, one thing you'll notice is on the first ball cycle, on the A2, the pin setter engages. The rake drops into position. Oh man, she went for that split. Trying to tip the six over into the four. You're gonna miss the six more often than you make the split trying that way, but she's already down 46. He kinda had to go for it. Well, watch this on the first ball cycle. The rake will come down at about the same time that the pin table descends. They come down almost simultaneously on the A. On the more modern A2 that you're familiar with at Bolero Roswell, the rake comes down first and then the table descends. See how they both come down at the same time and then the A2s just run faster. The earliest Brunswick A pin setters were actually built for Brunswick by the Otis Elevator Company. And you go back into the pit area and some of them have an Otis plate on them. I'm not sure about the pin setters here at Jefferson Lanes. We didn't go back in the back. There's a spare by Allison. hear that foul buzzer, those foul buzzers will get your attention in this house. Everything works really well here. For the age of this bowling center, they've got it in tip-top condition. The lanes could stand to be resurfaced, but everything works. Logan crosses over, his string of strikes stops at three. But he has a 45-pin lead with the easiest spare there is to shoot, the five-pin. Slipped at the line, barely stayed behind the foul line. Logan has been known to foul every now and then. It cost him a title on Prodigy Bowlers Tour earlier this season when he fouled in a critical situation. Sometimes behind his back, we call him Bigfoot. Solid strike right there. He's bowling well. Having the extra speed on lane conditions like what they will see here on these wood lanes, definitely an advantage. 10 in the pit. All right, Allison. Pretty much got to go to the wall from here. See how that ball started hooking way too early. She just needs to move farther left. 
She gets that ball out to the track area. It's going to hook immediately as soon as it hits the friction. And even though you think the friction is farther right, out where you think it's dry, on wood lanes, the friction is right there in the track. Spare conversion. Allison with a possible 212. Logan going at a 219 pace. Now Allison's got to get busy here. Bigger move. And it's still hooked high. She's shaking her head. She can't believe. Seems like every time I move farther left, it still hooks high. Solid conversion of the 6-10. Allison, a good spare shooter. But spares aren't going to get it done in this game. Big Logan with a strike up. And now a double working as he extends the lead to 59 and I think Allison sees the writing on the wall. Boom. Down they go. Five strikes in seven frames. He's not leaving much doubt, is he? Well now, what a way to get four. It's the three, four, six, seven, nine, ten. We've had this made once before on Prodigy. Gilbert Kang made it over at AMF Woodstock once. Put the ball over on the right side of the three, send it over into the four, seven. Hope for the best. But he's too solid on the three pin, and that's an open frame. Good news for Logan is he had some pins to burn. But now Allison has some life. She can strike out for 200. That would force Logan to get a couple of marks. Oh my goodness. Well, she left a whole bunch of seven pins at the GYBT Tournament of Champions one week ago on Prodigy and she just left another one. Swish and seven. Couldn't have thrown it much better. But just like last week, she has no problem converting it. But now, she's running out of bullets. Possible 189. She strikes out, she'd force Logan to get at least one mark. But she gotta get this one. 
And there it is. That's that swisher strike that she almost carried in the eighth, but the seven refused to go down. Watch this one again. This will hit in the half pocket. See, she, she's moved in left of the track now. She's finally found the line. Well, as I mentioned, Logan's going to need one mark somewhere. If Allison strikes out for 189, Logan will have to get a mark either in the ninth or tenth to beat her. Well, he throws a 23 mile an hour bomb at the seven pin and misses wide. So that mark that he needs, gonna have to get it here in the tenth. If he would happen to open in the tenth, Allison could double in the tenth and win. leaves the 10 pin on what looked like it might be a messenger but no he just missed a single pin spare in the ninth he must make this and get some pins in count to shut out Allison and this time he gets it bounces the 10 out and he will need a couple of pins here. And dare I remind him, stay behind the foul line. And there's that messenger he was looking for. And that's a winner for Big Logan Mathis, 198 game. So Allison will go through the motions of finishing out the game. Possible 189 with three strikes here in the 10th. But instead she goes high, leaves the 310 baby split. Again, this match is already settled, so. This is just for practice. Misses it, so her final score, a 157. Disappointing for Allison, I know, but that's two fourth place finishes in a week. She finished fourth at the GYBT Tournament of Champions one week ago, and a fourth place finish here, but it's Logan Mathis who's moving on, he will face Aiden Reynolds in match two when we return. This is it, the new gyro balance ball by Ebonite, the world's first and only professional bowling ball. And this is Don Carter, the man who conceived it. Over there, Carmen Salvino, Ray Bluth, Harry Smith, Bill Allen, and Billy Hardwick, some of the greatest bowlers in the world today. Every one of these men bowls for a living, and every one bowls Ebonite's new Don Carter gyro balanced ball. Custom balanced to control your hook precisely. Custom weighted on top to put the power where the pins are. Why are so many pros making the big switch to Ebonite? Simply because they win more money with it. That's the ball, the pro ball, the custom ball with the big Y that puts the power where the pins are. Ebonite's new Don Carter Gyro Balance, the ball that gives you the Ebonite Edge. Since Don Carter Gyro Balance balls take longer to build, make sure you order yours now. Well, Big Logan made it interesting at the end with his open in the ninth frame, putting a bit more pressure on him to mark in the tenth. But by the end of the game, it was clear that Allison just waited a little too long to make an adjustment. She finally moved in deep enough to play this pair of lanes, but resisted moving until it was too late. 
and there's a lesson there for everyone. When you're in a one-game match, there's no time to get comfortable with a move. When the lanes are telling you to move, listen to them and make the move now. So it's Logan Mathis who's moving on to match two to face his teammate in the Roswell Varsity League, Aiden Reynolds. Aiden, Logan, and A.J. Hairston comprised the team called Small, Medium, and Large this past season at Bolero Roswell. And with Big moving on to Emmanuel College this fall, I guess Aiden and A.J. will be fielding auditions for a third member. But they can worry about that later. Right now, this is Aiden's last chance to get his name on the coveted trophy pin this season in time for the Prodigy Tournament of Champions on June 22nd. Whoever wins this match will bowl for the title today against Christian Manel in the championship match. Solid strike to begin the match. Logan throws down the gauntlet. Over about the fourth arrow, maybe a little inside of it. And takes them all down. All right, Aiden Reynolds. That one hooks high, goes through the nose, leaves the 3-6-10. Now, we've seen players try to play out here. Allison was out around the first, maybe between the first and second arrow when she first started, and she had trouble out there. You need to get that ball, lay it down inside the track. There's a spare for Aiden. He's a good spare shooter. This young man bowling his first year as a U15. He dominated the U12s the last couple of years. First time we saw him, we took a team of Roswell kids out to Stars and Strikes and coming. He was on the coming team. He was the little kid on the team in our exhibition match. And he showed us something that day. He was the young one on the team, but he held his own against one of our young players and helped lead the Stars and Strikes team on to victory over the Roswell kids. He grew a little bit between then and the next year we bowled him. But then he really grew from then until I saw him before he came to bowl with us at Roswell this past year. And now he ain't a little kid anymore. Logan and Aiden, teammates in the Roswell Varsity League this past season. Their third member, A.J. Hairston couldn't be with us today. He suffered an injury at the GYBT TOC last week. We hope he's okay. Another solid strike by Logan. Watch this one again. Long reach with his follow through to keep that ball on line. Projecting it down the lane. And that's a solid strike. He's thrown a bunch of them already today. And that's a turkey to start this match. Watch this kid with the golden Lynn's shoes. He makes the pins disappear. Well, that ball is just picking up much too early. It starts hooking as soon as he lays it down. And I do believe that's because he's laying it down in that high friction area. Kids that aren't used to bowling on wood lanes aren't familiar with a track on the lane, but on wood lanes, 
It's where the ball beats up the lane, and you can actually feel it if you lay your hand down on the lane. There's bumps where the ball beats up the wood lane. Every year or two, they have to resurface the lane, shave it down, sand it out to get it perfectly flat. We don't really have to worry about that on synthetic lanes. They don't have resurfacing of synthetics. They do have to go in every now and then and make sure the topography is right because the synthetics do get little hills and valleys in them, but on wood lanes, you gotta make it part of your regular maintenance. Well, it looked like he gave that one a little extra speed at the bottom. And that one didn't quite make it back. And now Aiden's got the 210. Put the ball on the left side of the two, throw the two over into the 10. Looks like he's getting some guidance for this from his dad, who is also his coach. Plays it down the left side. I like the approach, but just threw it a little too far to the right, and that's an open frame. And now Big Logan with a turkey to start this match in a commanding position early. Can he keep this streak going? Yes, he can. Watch it again. When he gets on a roll, he's like a machine. Just a couple of months ago, Logan bowled 300 on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Could we be angling for something similar here? Aiden is hoping not. There's another solid strike for Logan. And a five-bagger to start. All right, Aiden. Now's the time to go crazy and run off a big string of strikes of your own. Well, instead of moving his feet left, it looks like he moved his target right. He leaves the 258. This is similar to the bucket without the four pin. Put the ball on the two and five. Let the ball drive through and take out that sleeper eight that's directly behind the two pin. Playing it from the right, you gotta look out and not chop it. Oh, and that's what happened. When you play the two five combination from the right side of the lane, you widen the gap between those two pins and it increases the probability of just that kind of chop. That's back-to-back -back opens for Aiden, and he is now 66 pins behind. And I think he'd just like to crawl back into this. That looked a little bit like a pull. As our angle here is looking right down the line of trajectory, he started that ball. It's frustrating when you just, seems like the ball wants to go everywhere but in the pocket. A conversion of the single pin spare, so at least he stops the bleeding. Still a possible 214 for Aiden if he strikes out. Of course, Logan's gonna have to tap the brakes if Aiden's gonna have any chance at all to catch him. Tap the brakes, he's gonna have to slam on the brakes. And he gets another strike. 
as the nine goes late. Though he's halfway to another 300. Watch this, I think it's the two pin that's gonna come off the wall and take out the nine. Watch the two go to the left wall. I think he knew that was good as soon as it left his hand. Going for seven in a row. Oh, a ring and ten. So the streak stops. Watch the six pin, the second one from the right. Going to fly up and around the neck of the ten pin. In the classic ring ten. And he missed it. Well, Aiden gives you a glimmer of hope anyway. Well, once again, instead of moving his feet left, he moved his target right. And that's not quite the way we recommend making the adjustment, but it is one way. The bucket, the two, four, five, eight, here's how you make it. Now he chopped this earlier with the two, five, eight. You wanna be careful, not take the two off the five. And he did it again. Well, I know that's got to be frustrating for him. And let's see if we can get a strong finish out of Aiden anyway. A little off balance when he let it go, but he will take the strike and celebrate small victories. Watch it again. He's going to slip, I think, at the foul line. But it's in the pocket, and hooray! Well... He gets one strike anyway. Logan gets his seventh in eight attempts. We've seen him do this again and again on Prodigy. When he gets dialed in, he is a tough out. I think he's going to seal this one on the next ball. Oh boy. Still, the five count is enough. He'll have the three, four, six, seven, ten, but he doesn't need it. He's already got the match in hand. But these are fun to see when they go. Not this time, though. So it's going to be Logan Mathis and Christian Manel in the championship match. Aiden will finish out. Gives that one a little extra loft. And it still goes through the nose. Well, I know Aiden and his family, they live out north of Atlanta. I don't know how long of a drive it is for them over here to Jefferson. But if he ever gets a chance to bowl on these wood lanes again, next time I think he might ought to try moving his feet about 
Well, at least five boards left, maybe as many as seven or eight, maybe even ten boards left, and play around the third arrow instead of out by the first and second arrows. I just think that's no man's land on a track shot. Ten goes late on a crossover. He'll take it. He's got a really simple game. It holds up really well under pressure. That's why he's done so well in the big tournaments in Georgia in his age group. Had a little bit of a fall off this year, his first year in U15, but that's not unusual after they've done so well in the U12s. He won both the Pepsi and the GYBT TOC in U12 last year. He made the step ladder at Pepsi this year, but just missed at the GYBT TOC, but had a good solid weekend. It's a 159 for Aiden after he had shot a 221 in his opening game in qualifying today. Second highest game we've seen so far today. Logan lets that one drift high and he will have the 3-6. Possible 2-23. Takes care of the spare. So it's going to come down to the two players in our field who both play deep inside, swinging the ball out to the track, but playing around the fourth arrow or even the fifth arrow to get the ball out there. There's a strike to finish, and Logan with a solid game, 223 to 159 over his buddy Aiden Reynolds. But now only one more signature will go on this year's coveted trophy pin. Will it be Logan's or Christian's? We'll find out next. If you got a steady date or if you're going straight, if you want a swing in time that never is a drag Come on, go Pauline, take your baby Pauline Everybody's Pauline What about me? If you want a place to go where Time will really fly or Take your baby out tonight and You'll be scoring high Just take her Pauline What about me? No wheels. I've got a car. A lug! He kicked everybody's butt in the qualifying round. Announcing a Prodigy Bowlers Summer Tour Special Event. I'll turn it and curve it, try to make it. For littles only. It's a first-of-its-kind Prodigy Bowlers Tour competition as we open up the field to nothing but the pint-sized prodigies. Kids 11 and under are encouraged to come Saturday, July 20th at Bolero Roswell. With the coveted trophy pin already awarded, we'll have a special prize for the winner. It's Prodigy Bowlers Tour's first ever for littles only event. All littles, all the time. And if we get enough in the micro size, we'll break them off into their own division. So if you've got a future star in the making who wants to be on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, this is the event for you. It's the Prodigy Bowlers Summer Tour for littles only special event. Saturday, July 20th. Sign up at 11.30 a.m. Qualifying starts at noon. Entry fee is just $10. Must be 11 or younger to be eligible. Parent or legal guardian must accompany the child. Join us at Bolero Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, Saturday, July 20th. And look who just threw the shutout ball. A 
Aiden bowled so well in the qualifying round, I really thought this might be his day to sneak in and sign the coveted trophy pin before the Tournament of Champions on the 22nd. But it just wasn't to be. His former teammate in league kind of put the kibosh on that. Big Logan's six-bagger out of the gate put Aiden behind the eight ball from the beginning of their match. But Aiden has had a great first year bowling U15 here in Georgia, and I look for him to continue growing and getting better and better. But now we're down to just two. The last time Big Logan and Christian Minnell bowled each other on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, it was a very memorable match. Boom! That strike secures the game, and he has evened the match at one game apiece. Other than the Scotch doubles nine pin no tap, we've never had the front 10. Here's Logan going for the 11th. And he gets it. There's nothing left to say. Today, they're bowling for the right to be the last one to put their name on the coveted trophy pin this season before we give it away at the Prodigy TOC on the 22nd. Both of these fellows are already qualified to be in it, but another win here would improve their seating in the mother of all step ladders. Well, the two exchange the uh, pre-match handshake and I don't think they want to let go. <laughs> What's going on here? All right. Christian was the higher qualifier, so he has the choice of starting lanes. He wants to lead off. That'll give him the option to finish last. Christian with the big bender, he's throwing urethane. That ball is hooking just about half the lane, and I don't know how that seven pin remained. Looked like a pretty solid hit to me. Goes straight at the seven pin and takes it out. So a spare to begin. Well, these two act like they're fierce enemies, but they're actually pretty good friends. And speaking as someone who has had lunch with them at places like Mexican joints, they can be hilarious. Four nine for an instant, the nine remains as the four gets tripped. A bit of a lucky break to start. Spare. So, we're even through one. Seems like every time these two bowl each other on Prodigy, sparks fly. One week, they even went straight from the bowling alley to the driving range. And no one was safe. Just a tick under 18 miles per hour, that throw. Logan with a five-step approach, slight drift to the left, as so many of the power players do. That's to get out of the way of the swing. So a spare and a strike to begin for Logan. Christian would like to match it. And he does just that.
Now Christian is building up a new arsenal. But he doesn't have a urethane ball in his new arsenal yet, so he's still throwing his old one, which has a slightly different grip in it, different fit. His new fit, he's got the thumb pitched left a little bit. The old fit, it's pitched slightly to the right. Throws them both pretty good, though. Oh, my goodness. How in the world did that strike? And we thought Logan got a lucky break when he broke down the 4-9. Watch this. I got to learn that trick. That was a good one. Logan with an answer. And he gestures, see that's how it's done right there. This is how it's done too. Right in the hole. Well, they're even through three. Each player with a spare and a couple of strikes. We expected this kind of action. Well, Big Logan looked at his hand. Something wasn't right. Maybe something slipped or he may be getting a blister. I'm not sure what, but leaves the 3-6. He'll go cross lane at it. Throw it hard and straight. No, he actually threw his normal hook ball, but with a urethane to cut down on the hook. In any case, he covers the spare. And Christian takes a two-pin lead. Now he takes a little extra time on this one. And he throws a good one. And now he's going to check his playlist on his phone, listening to music in his AirPods. I don't really have a problem with kids doing that. I do it in league. When I'm bowling league, I like it because it takes all the distractions away. Some tournaments don't allow it. I don't really care about it here on Prodigy. Little high, but he stuffs them back. And now, Christian with a four-bagger takes control of this match. Watch his footwork, big drift to the left. We see that all the time with the power players. And he gives that one a little fist pump. He knows what Logan's capable of. He was on the wrong end of that 300 game a few weeks ago. Boom, out go the lights. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that too loudly here. We've already had that happen once today. The storm's still above us outside here in Jefferson. And I have to say that our hosts here at Jefferson Lanes couldn't have been nicer. And patient through the weather delay, the power outage earlier, they were just super kind. And I recommend this place to anybody who wants a retro experience at the bowling alley. Logan with another strike, and he lets Christian know that he's not going away. Watch this one again. Fourth arrow. That one out to about 12. 
These old wood lanes don't have the tracers down lane for us to be more precise about where the ball is on the lane. As we get a peek at the old computer scoring systems from the Wayback Machine. Christian, just a touch high. His string of strikes stops at four. But an easy spare. And there's the conversion. Just 11 pins separating these two. If they were to happen to strike out from here, Christian would win by one pin. And the way they've been striking, I wouldn't put it past them. Christian rips the rack that time. Sends the five over into the seven and it had no chance. Watch it again. They're both playing about the same line. Both with the high rev rate. It just comes down to which one is gonna make the shots when he needs them. Crunch. And this is now a one pin match through seven. That might have been Logan's best ball today. No doubt about it. But now is when the rubber meets the road. Who can perform at the end of the match? They've each set themselves up to have a chance. Oh, but Logan's ball jumps on him at the end, goes through the nose. Now he's got the 3-7 split. Here's how you make it. Put the ball on the right side of the three. Throw that three pin over into the seven. Can be done. But he gets too much seven pin. It almost bounced out and got it from behind, but that's an open frame. And Christian takes a 15 pin lead with a strike up in the seventh. Uh-oh, and he goes wide with that one. Doesn't lose any count because he's working on a strike, but it's the super washout. Two ways to make it. Put the ball on the left side of the head pin, throw the head pin over into the six and 10 while the ball gets the two and four, or you can hit the right side of the head pin. But if you do that, you wanna throw a straight ball from the left side of the lane so the ball can deflect over into the 6-10. If you hook it into there, it'll just go straight by the 6-10. Just like that. So an open frame and we're back to a one pin match. Just when Christian thought he had a big advantage, he hands it right back to Logan. I told you, we get sparks every time these two bowl. Another solid one. Christian with a foundation strike in the ninth. 
And that was important because that means that Logan can't get up in the ninth and tenth and shut him out. Christian's shaking his head. He knows that that super washout, the open frame in the eighth, cost him a chance to just put Logan away. Oh, but look at this. Another mistake. This time Logan sends it a little too wide and it comes in thin. Leaves the 210. He can't believe he did that. Here's how you make it. It's the mirror image of what he just missed a little while ago when he shot the 3-7. Put the ball on the left side of the two. Slide it over into the 10. Little off balance at the foul line and that wasn't close. So now Logan trails by 12. And he's just got to gather himself and do the best he can here in the 10th frame. And that's pretty good right there. Solid strike. Watch it again. Watch the six pin. Second one from the right. It'll go to the right wall and come back and just tomahawk out the 10. But now he needs this next one. If he can get this next one, he can force Christian to mark in the 10th. There you go. Had to have that one to put some pressure on Christian. See this one again. This was solid as can be. At this point, he's just throwing up a prayer. He feels like he lost the match with that open frame in the ninth. But one more strike, and he can force Christian to get 19 in the tenth. And there it is. So Logan has done his job and put the onus back on Christian. Here it is, the strike in the 12th. Buried that one in the pocket. Watch it again, see his reaction. And now all he can do is sit down and hope. Christian must mark. He needs a spare and nine to win. Uh-oh. The ball hooks high. And he has left the three, six, seven, ten. Watch it again. Watch Logan's reaction in the lower left. Oh, my goodness. Christian can't believe this. What a time to throw one through the nose. Here's how you make it. Put the ball on the right side of the three. The ball will get the six and ten. You want the three to go over and get the seven on the left corner of the lane. He's going to shoot cross lane at it. He must make it or Logan wins. My goodness. My goodness gracious. What a great try. It's big Logan Mathis who has won the Bigs championship here in Jefferson. We get another look at this one. Again, you can see Logan react in the lower left. Christian can't believe he missed it. Logan can't believe he missed it. But it is a thrilling ending to our stay here in Jefferson, Georgia today as big Logan Mathis takes the title in the Bigs division. We'll get his signature on the coveted trophy pin, the last one this year, when we return after this. 
Hey, it's me, Coach Randy, with exciting news about a new way you can help support Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Over the past couple of years, we've had a number of Prodigy fans say they'd love to offer something in payment for the Prodigy content seen each week on YouTube throughout the bowling season. Well, I'm pleased to announce that Prodigy is now on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Now, in case you're not familiar with it, Patreon is a platform where YouTube content consumers like you can connect directly with YouTube content creators like me and pledge a small amount of money each month to support the work that goes into creating the content that you enjoy watching. It's based on the age-old concept of patrons. About 30 to 40 hours of work goes into the production of each and every episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour. So if you enjoy the content on Prodigy Bowlers Tour each week and you'd like to support the show, please check it out at patreon.com slash prodigy bowlers tour. There are four affordable subscription tiers, and each one offers a different reward, up to and including sneak peeks of shows before they're released to the public, exclusive behind-the-scenes content that only members will ever see, and there's even a tier that will enable you to get all that and get your name in the credits each week as a producer of the show. You'll be helping me to be able to continue making the show each week and even reinvest some of the money into improving the show going forward. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks for supporting Prodigy Bowlers Tour. It's the second annual Prodigy Bowlers Tour Tournament of Champions. All the winners from the 2018-19 season are invited to AMF Woodstock for the mother of all stepladders, as one winner will claim the coveted trophy pin as their own. It's the one major on the Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Then, one week later, it's our final big blowout of the season, as we invite the grown-ups to bowl with the kids in our third annual Adult Youth Scotch Doubles 9-Pin No-Tap Race to 300 on the house shot. If you have a connection to youth bowling, either you are a youth bowler, or you're the parent or grandparent of a youth bowler, or you're a coach, you're invited to bowl with us Saturday, June 29th at Bolero Roswell. Check in at 11.30 a.m. Qualifying begins at noon. It's our biggest event of the year and our one Parents Appreciation Day each season. So bring your youth bowler and your bowling ball to Bolero Roswell, June 29th at 1130. Well, we came all the way out to Jefferson, Georgia, and I told you we'd crown three champions today. And so we did. Of course, it's not every day you hear about a rain delay in bowling. But we had just that in our single ball eliminator, as the storms that pounded the Jefferson area knocked out the electricity here at Jefferson Lanes for an hour. But once the power was restored, Emily Reddig proved that her game was up to the challenge. Then in our main event today, Hunter Moffat emerged as the champion among the littles that came out to Jefferson to bowl with us today. And in the bigs, Logan Mathis stole victory from the jaws of defeat as Christian Manel suffered a heartbreaking defeat on the final ball of the day in a match I don't think any of us will soon forget. So it's Logan Mathis who will be the last to sign this year's coveted trophy pin before we award it to the winner of the Prodigy Bowlers Tour Tournament of Champions on June 22nd at AMF Woodstock. Ladies and gentlemen, there's your champion of the Jefferson Lanes Open from Emmanuel. That was a pretty thrilling final match. And now he's digging into the box of colors, going with the, the masculine pink and signing his name to the coveted trophy pin. Do you have any words of consolation to uh, Christian? 
I, I feel bad. I mean, he should have had that split conversion right there. I know. That was heartbreaking. But it was a pretty exciting win for you. Yeah. The final win before the Prodigy Tournament of Champions in two weeks at AMF Woodstock. That's you, hot. You gonna be there? Yeah. Awesome. You may be able to go home with this. Congratulations. Thank you.